Okay. Finally. <laughs> I had like the only scare. All right. So let's bring this down a notch. So guys, I, I've been home for quite a while and I just, you know, right before the stream, like 10 minutes before I got on my computer and I was trying to connect the camera, start the stream and get everything going and nothing was working. So I I kept restarting the program, unplug, you know, you know, you unplug, you reset, things like that. And I just could not get it to work. So I said, let me just shut down. And then my computer didn't want to shut down. And it was like, you know, logging off, loading, 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 loading. So I did a forced reset. I reset it. And then when I got it to actually come up again, it was like, oh, you know, we can't load your desktop, so please reinstall all your programs. I was like, why does this always happen to me when I have a live stream? If I just needed to do nothing, nothing would be wrong. But because I needed to do something, it just wasn't working. So I apologize for my tardiness. Again, um, my computer hates me sometimes. The feeling is mutual. But thank you guys for joining me for our weekly Ants Team live training. I see Miss Janet is already here and she's chatting to us. Hi, Miss Janet. <laughs> thank you for joining. Um, so today we are going to be talking about how to build your customer base from scratch. So whether you're a new representative just getting started in this business or you're an existing representative who maybe moved to a new location and you are looking for a fresh customer base, or if you're saying, you know what, I want to revamp. And this has actually happened to me in my business um, a few years ago. I just had a large group of my customers retire, move, or unfortunately pass away. So I found myself with far fewer customers than I normally had. And I said, you know, I need to get back and, you know, kind of just start from scratch and, you know, find new customers. So this is something, um, tonight's topic of discussion is going to be something that is, um, you know, useful to everyone. So we're going to be talking about starting our customer base from scratch. So if you're wondering or looking for ideas for how to do that, or if you're feeling the pressure and the anxiety of, you know, having to start from scratch, don't feel bad. We go through it every once in a while in all businesses, you know, not just with Avon, but with, you know, other businesses. Sometimes you just feel like you need to get a fresh page and start from scratch. So we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks and ideas today. I've got five ideas to be sh to share with you. So stay with me. And as usual, I would love to hear you guys' wins for the week. You guys is, is not even a word in the dictionary, but it is for me. How do you pluralize you guys? Uh, <laughs> so um, we always do this. We get together for the week and we share the things that we are celebrating. So for me this week, um, some of the things that I'm celebrating are, first and foremost, I, um, I had a project that I was working on and I finally finished it. So I'm going to be um, rolling that out. I was um, just I've just been trying to um, streamline working with my team and connecting with my representatives in, you know, multiple ways. So I've I've um, sort of set up a plan for myself. You guys know I'm big on scheduling. You can't see it, but right here on the post-it on my wall, I've got a little post-it note that says, what gets scheduled gets done. So I've been working on, you know, my own personal schedule, but also connecting with my team members to help them build and develop their schedules so that the things that they need to do to get their business started get done. And so that they know, um, they have an idea of the things that they can do to build their business. And they're not just, you know, it can be overwhelming, especially when you're first getting started. You're getting a new kit, you're getting a new website, and, you know, you kind of have that feeling of, you know, where do I start? What do I do? So I really kind of wanted to just streamline that for them and um, for myself so that I kind of have checkpoints along the way that I could say, okay, you know, these are the things that we're talking about um, today. Next week, we're going to touch base again and talk about the thing, you know, a different set of things. Um, if you have questions, you know, you, these are the methods that you can reach out to me, Facebook, email, Twitter. And I, you know, I just wanted to create a different set of ways for my, my representatives to reach out to me if they did have questions so that, you know, um, we can eliminate that system, <laughs> that age old problem of our new reps feeling like they are bothering us when they're reaching out to us as coaches and mentors. But I really wanted to be strong about developing that coaching relationship in the beginning so that I could, um, 
so that I could build that relationship with my rep. So it's not only for them, but also for me. And then thirdly, for the leaders on my team, I want to incorporate them into our training so that they can see what's happening and get an idea of ways that they can also build their relationship with the, their team members so that, as Malago says, it's duplicatable. Um, so I just wanted to have that system in place. And I feel like this week I've gotten to a point where I'm like, yes, it is working. I've kind of smoothed and ironed out a lot of the bumps. And now, um, now that it's implemented, I could, you know, revise and tweak and tune. But I've, I've kind of been doing that starting from last year. Last year was um, kind of, you know, just coming up with what I'm going to do. And then this year was more like implementation. And now this is my third month in. So um, seeing the results on my team, seeing the positive um, positivity and all the good stuff that's been happening, I've, you know, been feeling a lot better about all of this. So that was my win for the week. Let's see what you guys are celebrating. Miss Gina, thank you for joining. Miss Gina is a member of our team. Welcome, Miss Gina. So excited to see you here and thank you. It's also a work in progress. Miss <laughs> um, Janet says her win for the past few weeks is she got online sales. Last campaign, she had almost $500. Woo, woo! Congratulations, Miss Janet. Um, she also has $100 so far for this campaign, which I'm guessing just started for her, but she's really working on online sales. Congratulations to you, Miss Janet. And it looks like your hard work is paying off. And I love that. I love when the consistency that you, um, when you, when you start developing consistency, and building momentum, you start to see the progress. So keep sticking with it, Miss Janet. I know I've watched you promote on your channel and I see the stuff that you're doing. So I'm glad to see that it's working. And for you know anyone else who might be watching and feeling like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, it take it's taking longer than I thought, or maybe this is impossible. This is something that's not for me. I can't do this. Don't feel that way because at the end of the day, it's you know, we're all coming from the same starting point. We all start from zero and we work our way up. So if you just stick with it, hang in there, you will start to see results like Miss Janet. I'm sure she, you know, didn't start last week and now she's starting to see these results. I'm sure she's been putting in the hard work and, you know, grinding and just trying to build her business this time, you know, over the last few, maybe months, maybe years, we don't know. But the point is, Right now, none of that matters because she's seeing the results and she has to look forward to what's going to come. So congratulations to you, Miss Janet, on your victory. That is an awesome one to share. We all love to have new customers, new teammates, new, um, you know, hashtag Avon family. So um, congrats, Miss Janet. So, oh, she also said two years of hard, but worth it. Two, work, two years of hard work, but worth it in the end. And yes, consistency does really pay off. So thank you for the kudos, Miss Janet. We are in agreement on that. And I, I've i actually, for myself, um, I don't just say it to you guys because it sounds nice. You know, consistency is key. It's a catchphrase. Um, I say it because I've seen it in my own business and I've watched other representatives people, you know, who came before me, people who are working with me and people that I'm working with to coach, train and mentor and, you know, be a buddy too. Um, I, you see that the consistency pays off. So if you're doing this and you just started, hang in there. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but you just have to keep chug-lugging and get over the hump. It's, you know, a sleep climb sometimes going up, but when you come down on the other side, it's a lot easier. But so many people quit on that climb going up and they don't get to see the other side. They don't get to see the, the rainbow and the pot of gold on the other side. So I'm glad to see that Miss Janet is seeing her pot of gold. So why don't we go ahead and dive in, into our training for tonight. I'm just going to be sharing some tips and I would love for you guys too in the chat box because this is really very much a community of um not just representatives, but business people. So if you have any tips that you have that you can share, feel free to share them in the chat box. I always say this is not just me being the talking head. This is, you know, the community. And we all learn from each other. Um, when you comment in the chat box and when you talk to each other, you build friendships and relationships. And I, for one, can definitely tell you 
I am looking forward to RepFest this year because I am looking forward to meeting all of you that I've met online um, over the years and the new fresh faces I've been um, getting posts and watching the posts from you guys where you're where you've shared with me that you'll be attending RepFest maybe for the first time or you know my crew that I hang out with uh, shout out to you guys who we you know we get together each year for RepFest I'm looking forward to seeing everyone and a lot of those relationships are people that I met through these online chats just watching um, and participating in the conversations that um, team leaders and coaches are doing because it's really not just um, it's great that you listen but when you're in interacting and building those relationships that's when you start to see a lot of progress and a lot of growth because um, somebody might share an idea that I never thought of or they might embellish on an idea or they might be able to share their success with an idea that they've either heard from me or heard from another representative. And that is all cool. We are all one big community where we all get to share and learn from each other. You know, it's like building bricks. You guys know I'm like an architectural designer, so I apologize for all the building references, but you know, you put one person puts one brick, another person puts another brick, everybody pitches in to build and before you know it, you have uh, a beautiful house, but you know, everyone puts in, uh, everyone adds and contributes to something. Normal people I think would probably use a cooking analogy, but I'm an eater, not a cooker. All right, so why don't we go ahead and um, get into our tips for today. So as I said, I've got five tips that I'm going to share with you on how you can start to grow your customer base from scratch. And again, whether you're new or an existing representative, this is going to be, these are things that everyone can do. And a lot of these are things that I did so I can personally attest to their success. So why don't we go ahead and start with number one. Number one is actually one that I think all of you will be familiar with. It is building your who do you know list. What is a who do you know list? Exactly what it sounds like. It's a list of people that you know. And this is actually a step that I think a lot of people skip over. And I know in the beginning, it was something that I wanted to skip over because just looking at, you know, trying to compile a list of people was daunting to me. Um, but over the years, I've actually found it to be very helpful. And I will tell you now, I still go back to my list and I'm constantly ever expanding on my who do you know list. So the who you know list is just a list of people that you know, no holds barred, no um, filtering, no formatting, just brainstorming everyone you know. And it's really great to take a moment and sit down, you know, maybe time yourself, give yourself 25 minutes to just put down the names of everyone that you know. I like to recommend giving yourself a time because what you'll do is you'll sit down and say, okay, I have a lot of names. And you'll go, you'll go, you'll go, you get to 10 and then you'll say, that's it, okay, I'm done. But then you look at the clock and you'll say, okay, well, that was only a minute. I've got 24 more minutes to do. All right, who else can I think of? Who do I see in the day? Who are the other people on my list? And, you know, just having uh, a slightly larger time period forces you to really, really think about the people you know. Um, I also like to do these little, um, let's see if I can find it, these little um, information lists. It's This one is called 40 Prospects in 4 Minutes. So you're thinking about friends, neighbors, spouses, and co-workers, but the goal is to um, have a list of, I guess, 10 different categories and think of just four people for those 10 categories. And it, you know, help by helping you to think of specifics of like four neighbors. Most of us have four neighbors, two on either side and at least two on the other side of the street. Um, most of us can think of a, you know, at least four co-workers, past or present. So, you know, by breaking up into smaller chunks, we always say, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. By breaking it down into smaller chunks, it really helps you to get your mental juices flowing and think of new names. So um, don't knock your who do you know list. And even if you've been with this business for a long time, still go back to your who do you know list and try to brainstorm and think of new people. I love doing Avon events because sometimes we'll get together in a room and the, the leader or the speaker might encourage us to, you know, take a minute and think of as many names as we know. And I tell you, not for nothing, but every single time I can add at least one to two, one to three people that I may not have considered before. Um, even though I have done the Who Do You Know list when I first got started, even though I, I regularly update my Who Do You Know list, just being in that atmosphere and, you know, hearing 
um, other people say, oh yeah, my nail technician, or oh yeah, you know, my cousin, sister's brother's uncle's aunt <laughs> that I just met the other day. Hearing people brainstorm, just being in a room full of that mental energy where people are being productive and brainstorming really helps me. So um, every once in a while, I might, you know, if I feel like I'm in a rut or if I feel like I, I need to reach out to a new set of people, I might say, okay, Georgie, let's sit down quickly, half a minute, brainstorm everybody that you came in contact with this week and see if any of them are or who might be interested in hearing about my business. So um, first and foremost, do not forget your who do you know list, just your list of contacts. Use your cell phone, use your Facebook and your social media. Um, and don't just rely on your immediate group of people, your um, immediate family. You know, don't just list mom, cousin, aunt, and brother. Try to expand beyond that. Like, force yourself to think outside of the box to, you know, the people you sit next to on the train, the people um, in the doctor's office. You know, think of people that you normally wouldn't be in contact with. So um, idea number two that I have is to join community events. Um, we always say this is a social business. I, we, it's become like a, a bit of a joke, but I feel like it's true. But the Avon was like really the first social selling business. Like think about it back in the day, Avon representatives would go door to door. They would have little Avon parties. The ladies would get together. And mm -hmm. within their social circle, they would share the beauty products. And it was an opportunity for women, even at a time when women didn't have the right to vote, didn't really have um, an opportunity to be in business for themselves like we do now. So we take it for granted now. But back in the day, it was an opportunity for women to get out and socialize with each other. Yes, back then you had to like physically go to a friend's house to connect and now it's 2017, we could do that by phone and internet and, you know, WhatsApp and all of these new apps that are out there. So while the, the look of the social selling has changed a little bit, it's still really a social situation. So by getting into the community and joining community events, you're expanding your network. You're connecting with other people in the community who hopefully have the same interests as you. So think about the things that you're interested in. What are your hobbies? Um, what are the things that you do for fun? What are the things that you like to do with your family that you and your, your friends do? Um, you know, how do you like to spend your free time? And find other groups outside of your current social circle that you can get plugged into. Or if you have a friend who, you know, does extracurricular activities, see what she's doing and offer, you know, or ask, Invite yourself, <laughs> get yourself invited, try to go with her to something to, to meet other people. That's actually one and two. But um, I, I consider it, sorry, that's actually two and three. But it's all, you know, getting to know other people. So um, a lot of communities will have fairs and um, street fairs and block parties. And a lot of times when we talk about community events, those are the events that we think of. But I kind of want you to expand beyond that to your social circle events. So if your friend goes salsa dancing every Thursday, you know, go with her one time, get to meet her friends. You know, that is your expanded community. For those of you who are on LinkedIn, they've kind of developed this um, system of who you know, who your direct contacts are, and who your like third and fourth generation contacts are. So it's sort of like that, you know, getting in that mindset in your life. So um, you might have a, um, maybe you're a part of a, a tennis organization. So all of your friends on your team are your immediate circle, but you might be playing against other teams. So that's an opportunity for you to meet and connect with other people. Or maybe you're a part of a, a group of people who maybe do wine tasting and you go to different activities, different um, restaurants or bars or um, I don't know where wine tastings happen. <laughs> but you know, you go to different locations. But each time you go to a different location, it's an opportunity for you to meet new people. And then on like the third party connections, you might not play tennis, but you might have a friend who plays tennis. And she might be having a brunch with her, her tennis pals. You get to go with her and meet her tennis pals. You've now broadened and expanded your social network. So by getting yourself plugged in and 
like community, like our typical community events, the street fairs, the craft fairs and things like that, but also the events that the people in your community are having, you'll be able to expand your network just by meeting new people. So that's step three and two and three. Step two I had was, you know, community events, typical street fairs, craft fairs, things we normally look for and things that I look for when, um, when I first had joined Avon. But depending on where you are, you may not have a lot of those. Or as I found, sometimes the activity already has an Avon representative. So um, still go introduce yourself, meet her, get to know her. She might become a buddy or a pal. Um, you know, don't alienate yourself from other people. Um, still have that relationship. But um, I wouldn't go there. I, and I've had this happen in the past. Don't be the person who goes and stands next to the person's table who has paid to participate in this event and try to like poach her customers. That's just poor behavior. And I've seen it done for other companies. I've had other people from other companies do it to me. And I'm just like, ugh, tacky. But, um, you know, don't be that person. You know, just go and introduce yourself. Let her know you're an Elon rep too. Maybe you'll see her around at upcoming activities. So that might be um, a new friend for you. Go to rep fest together, get to know each other. Maybe you get to partner up on the next event. Um, but, you know, that's street fairs. But also, be mindful of your your social circles communities think of it as linkedin who do the people that you know know next um i have as number four get to know your neighbors now this is one you know everybody always says oh no i don't want to go door to door i uh, you know that's so um do i still have to do that that's old school blah 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 but at the end of the day what is it really you just introducing yourself to other people. I think we need to kind of take off the, the filter in our brain of, you know, this sell, 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 sell. Really and truly what it's about is getting to know other people to expand your network. The people that you're meeting may not immediately be customers, but they might actually be uh, an invitation to your next event, or um, they might introduce you to your next customer. So it may not always be, you know, here's a brochure, buy from me, uh, or here's a catalog, buy from me, here's my business card, buy from me. Um, you know, if you were, you know, always kind of step back and, you know, you're in this direct sales business, but, you know, how would a lawyer act? How would a doctor act? How would an architect act? As a matter of fact, architects, I think, need to do more promotion, but that's a story for another day. But think about just making connections. So go to your neighbors. If you, whether you've moved into a new neighborhood or you've been living there for years and you haven't talked to the people around you, that was so me. You just go and introduce yourself. Say good morning, say hello, you know, start the conversation. How are you? How are the kids? How's the family? How's work? Well, you know, when you start to ask people questions about their life with the genuine interest of wanting to get to know them and, um, you know, be a part of their life, they will re return that. So when you ask people about their job and how their life is going, they'll reciprocate and they'll ask you about your job and your life and how things are going. And that will be an opportunity for you to share your excitement about your business. You know, hey, I just started a new business and I'm really loving it. I just moved to this new neighborhood and I don't really know a lot of people, but I love that this opportunity gives me a chance to connect with new people. Nothing salesy, nothing, you know, no pressure, just sharing what you would normally share with any other job. Um, so don't always feel like, you know, you have to be like pressure on, not so. It's really about making connections. So go introduce yourself to your neighbors. Um, I remember back, well, I don't remember. This was not in my, my neighborhood and not in my time. But do you remember watching TV where people would have a new neighbor move in and somebody would break a, bake a pie or cookies or something? Nobody does that anymore. So how many of you would be, you know, excited or thrown off guard or a little surprised if someone came to your door with a little welcome basket to welcome you to the neighborhood. Nobody does that anymore. So you would definitely stand out and um, that person would remember you. And you would also make a new friend. So you might, you you make a new connection, you make a new, you might make a new friend. Um, hopefully you stay friends. And, you know, you could, you could bake cookies and, you know, have that be something different that you're sharing. Or you can make a little basket of products, some candles, some things for the home, and, you know, just kind of give that. And when they ask about it, you can let them know, well, you know, this is what I do for a living. This is my business. I hope you like the products, you know, 
in your basket. These are the kinds of products that I share every day with my business. Again, no pressure, not salesy. Um, knock and introduce yourself to businesses. So not just your residential neighborhood neighbors in your community, but the other businesses in your community. Walk into the businesses, ask them, you know, how's business? Right now, where I am, it's the winter. We actually have a storm coming tomorrow. So um, sometimes with the winter weather, things aren't so great. But I'll walk into businesses, you know, usually a business that I will be working with. But instead of just going in, doing my transaction and coming out, I'll walk in do what I have to do, maybe wander a little bit to kind of see what else they offer. Because um, I realized that a lot of times you'll go somewhere with the intention of doing one thing. And then when you get there, you, if you actually take a moment to kind of look around, you might find that they do a lot of different things. And in this day and age, a lot of businesses are diversifying their portfolio in the same way that a lot of us are, you know, by having our hashtag side hustle. So go in, strike a conversation, you know, what other services do you provide, by the way, just out of curiosity, maybe I might have some friends who might be interested. And that business person would be more than happy to, to share with you the things that they do, the services they offer, maybe any deals and discounts. I like to collect business cards. Um, if it's a business that I love, my, my hair salon, the place where I go to buy fabric, I'll say, you know, give me a couple of extra business cards. I meet different people all the time in my in my field of work, in my line of work. I, you know, if anybody asks about a hair salon or a nail salon or a fabric supply store, I'll be more than happy to pass in your card. And most businesses are more than happy to pass on their card. And a lot of them will offer, well, first and foremost, going to ask, well, what is it that you do? You get to you meet a lot of people. What do you do? And that's an opportunity for you to share what you do as a business. But also, they might even ask for your card because they might say something like, oh, well, you know, if you send us referrals, we, we have something for you as well. Do you have a business card? And that's an opportunity for you to share your card and then um, show them what you do. I've shared this a lot in the past. Um, my business cards are actually little sample packs. So I have a regular business card. On the back, there's a coupon, but also in there, I don't know if you can see it, and it's gone, uh, <laughs> was a little lipstick bullet. This was sealed, but I think I was in there getting stuff. But I like to do little sample packs. Even if I don't have uh, like a business card sample pack, I might have a bigger sample pack with the recruiting flyer, a business card, and a little sample. And I might say something like, oh, I'm an independent sales representative with Avon products, or if I'm feeling, again, spicy, I might say, I'm a beauty boss with Avon products. I run my own business, or I coach and mentor other women to be successful, independent sales people, you know, whatever you feel like. Um, and then I will share the whole recruiting flyer, and I might say, you know, here's some information about my business. You might be interested in learning more about it, or you might know someone else who's interested, but, you know, take a look at it, enjoy your sample. And uh, when I come back in to, you know, complete my transaction or for phase two of my transaction or because their ice cream was so good, I am definitely going to be coming back. I'll say you something like, you know, I'll be back next week, Tuesday, but I would love to know what you think about that product or that sample. Give it a try. Let me know how you like it. So um, again, not always being like me, 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 but wanting to connect and build relationships with other people. Um, so residential businesses and, you know, wherever you go. So if you're standing online in the grocery store, if you're going to the laundromat, the dry cleaners, um, if you're sitting in the nail salon or the hair salon, a lot of times you're sitting in the nail salon, your nails are busy, you can't um, text, you can't really call. I always have my, my headphones in, so I have to work on taking those out so I could just be aware of my circumstances. But Sometimes you might be at the salon and, you know, you're getting your nails done. The person next to you is getting her nails done. You might lean over and say, hey, that's a really beautiful color. Are you here celebrating a special occasion? I love to see when um, mothers and <clears throat> mothers and daughters come into salons because then I'll ask, you know, oh, you know, what's the occasion? Is it a special mother-daughter day out or is she, you know, doing anything special? Usually it's something special, um, a special event, a graduation, a birthday, um, a wedding or things like that. And then, you know, you strike up a conversation about what they're doing. And, you know, you might 
either at the end of the conversation, if the conversation didn't swing towards, um, you know, what I do for a living, what do you do for a living type of situation, you might just say, you know, you guys are so cute and I have some really cute samples I just want to share with you. Take it, look through it, enjoy it. This is all yours. Have a, a great day. I might even leave um, a couple of my business card samples with the salon owner. Again, just talking to your businesses. But really, it's about connecting to the people around you. And I always talk about wearing your Avon button. That is a really great way to strike up your conversation. Oh, sorry, that's number five. Uh, <laughs> promoting your business with um, decals and buttons. Because those are other ways, especially if you're a shy person, if you're a little timid, or if you don't really know um, how to, to break the ice and start, and start a conversation, sometimes just having your button on or a name tag on will spark that conversation with the other person if they're interested. Obviously, if a person loves Avon and they're looking for an Avon representative, when they see you with your button and your or your badge on that says Avon, they're going to say, oh my gosh, I've been looking for an Avon representative. Are you a rep? Do you have a brochure? Do you have a sample? And that has happened to me so many times just from having my button on my scarf or on my coat. And I've shared with you the stories of how many times this has happened. But it's really about, um, on that end, you know, you're promoting and branding yourself as the Avon lady, as the Avon representative. But again, it's also um, getting your, your roots into your community because people, if people see you with your button day in and day out, you're coming to buy your coffee, you're coming to pick up your bagel for breakfast or your lunch or your dinner, if they see you coming in constantly with your Avon stuff on, you'll become known as the Avon lady. Um, my car or Avon man, whichever one, um, my car has the Avon decals on the back. The other day, um, going through getting my, my inspection stickers, I would call the mechanic and I would say, oh, you know, I drive the Maxima with the Avon stickers on the back. And he was like, oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. How are you? I roll into that service station and, you know, my whole car says Avon. So he may not remember my face. He's a mechanic. He's really not looking at the button, but my car rolls in with stickers on it. He's like, what is all this stuff that she has <laughs> on all her windows? The other day, even... I was getting gas and the the rear window on that side where the gas is um, has an Avon sticker. I honestly don't even remember what it says. I think it's something like um, brochures on board or asking for a sample or something like that. So the guy is pumping my gas and he's like, what's a brochure? Or, you know, what's an Avon or something like that. He asked me and I'm like, huh? I wasn't even paying attention and, you know, shame on me, but I, I wasn't. I really wasn't paying attention. And I was like, what's a what? <laughs> Where do you see that? And he was like, you know, so we, we started this conversation and he actually bridged the conversation and gave me an opportunity for me to share with him what I'm doing. And I shared, I didn't just say, oh, I'm an Avon lady. I said, you know, oh, I'm an independent sales representative. I train, coach, and mentor people to become successful in a business of their own, in their own time to, you know, I started it to, you know, help with my college tuition, blah, blah, blah. He mentioned he is also a college student. He is doing that job to help with his tuition. So we were able to connect and kind of bond over that. Oh my gosh, you know, the struggle of working and, you know, holding down a job, but also trying to do your schoolwork and stay on top of your grades and your studies and your GPA. And, um, you know, we, we talked about other things as well, but before I left, I made sure I left him with a full catalog and a sample. And he even said, you know, hey, can I have another one for the guys inside? I did have some men samples, try to have a mixture of both because the men are just as interested. But he was like, you know, hey, can I have some for the guys in, it was um, one of those um, like gas station, like it was like the service station and then the little deli buffet, what do you call it? Like food area, food court area, but then also the car wash. So I gave him an extra three brochures. I was like, yeah, share with each of those. Save me the trouble. I didn't even get out of my car. <laughs> and, you know, here I was giving out four brochures. So, you know, these are each opportunities. He may never call me. I may never hear from him. But when I come back, and I've had this happen as well, 
when I come back, we'll be able to talk. How's school? How are things going? And we're building that relationship. He may not need Avon. He may not be interested in it. But if any one of his friends mention Avon, he's going to say, oh, you know, I know that name. And I know someone who, who sells Avon and has an Avon business. And either he'll still have my brochures and my contact information because he has my card and my brochure. Or, you know, he might, you know, just wait till I come back for more gas to say, you know, I have a friend who is looking, can I have something to pass on to them? But you're really just planting the seeds. And I, I think if you get in the mindset, and I know there's a lot of pressure, especially when you're first getting started to, um, to you know, start off with a $1,000 order. But if you gradually work your way up to that, it's just as good. And another thing that I want to encourage you guys to do is keep a running list of all of your contacts. You know, if you meet someone and you connect with them and you exchange contact information, create a database. I actually have a, an Excel spreadsheet. You can also, I recently transferred to um, a Google document, but it's a spreadsheet with their first and last name, their phone number, their email address, their um, mailing address, and any notes that I have about where I met them, when I met them, and things like that. Um, I also use Evernote as well to keep track of the people that I meet, and I jot down any notes that I that I have about them, where I met them, any you know if they said that they like any particular product. And I cannot tell you how many times I've met a person, maybe six months, a year, two years even, have passed by, and all of a sudden I either get a call from them. Or I, um, or I reach out to them, you know, maybe a product like recently, as a matter of fact, they're, um, you know, Avon is talking about bringing back new products. And I have a couple of people who have asked for some of the products on the, that list. And I was able to reach out to them to like, you know, say, Hey, by the way, you and I met at such and such a place at such and such a time. And you mentioned that you are really in love with topaz or here's my heart or you know whatever and i've been hearing from the grapevine that avon is thinking about bringing back some of these products so let me know if you're still interested i'd be more than happy to get you a bottle or get you a sample or connect with you to you know introduce you to another fragrance that we have that you might like and you know just having that conversation of you know not um do you have anything that you want to buy or you didn't place your order or you didn't buy anything buy something <laughs> you know you don't want to be that person you want to develop the relationship so it's all about relationships and friendships and you know when you build relationships with people like you and like working with you again they will be more than happy to share your contact information so that becomes another source for you to build on your list so your list isn't just you building it's also an opportunity you're building it but it's not just about the specific contacts that you physically make. It's about the contacts that you can get from connecting with other people. It's about building a network, which is why this is called network marketing, not ask people to buy things, <laughs> you know, uh, or, you know, sell to people. And I think if we um, are just aware of that, it will also be better for new people who are thinking about this opportunity, because I think a lot of people are afraid to get into something like this because they might feel like, oh, you know, I don't want to be salesy or I don't want to pressure people or, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, force people to buy. And I've heard a lot of people say things like that to me. And I'm like, well, then don't be. Don't be that person. You don't have to be. I'm not because I don't want that person, you know, doing that to me. So treat others in the way that you would like to be treated and as other human beings. And, you know, you'll usually find success in that. And like Miss Janet was sharing in the chat box, be consistent. That is, you know, an extra bonus from Miss Janet. Be consistent in whatever you're doing. Don't just go out one day, talk to five people and then quit. Because like I said, those five people may not be ready right now, or they may not be ready for themselves, but you gotta hang in there long enough to receive the the fruit of the seeds that you plant and if you plant enough seeds in enough places you will start to get fruit coming in from places that you never expected um just last week i i had a referral from someone to become a representative why they knew someone who knew that i was a rep they had been talking about you know possibly getting started with the business and in you know they could have gone online and just you know put their information in and been connected to a random person but the person that they spoke to said you know i know someone who is in this and loving it and you know she'll be able to to help you out 
and that person gave me a call out of the blue, never met them before. <laughs> I just, you know, completely oblivious to their existence, but they were alerted um, about me through another person. And this person, I'll be honest with you, is not even a customer. I love them to death. <laughs> they, they're, not, they're not a customer. They just, you know, knew what I did and they passed that information on. And I'm thankful for those people. I am, you know, just as grateful for those people as I am for the customers because they have value too. And if you look at people, again, as human beings and, you know, having value in their ex existence, you know, just in the fact that they exist, then, you know, you'll be less like, well, so-and-so never buys, so I don't want to talk to them. You know, they're, you'll develop the relationship with them still person to person, and you don't know what they can contribute to your business. I would never have expected. I didn't even know this person was paying attention. So the fact that, I'm, I mean, I talk about it 24-7, and like I said, I wear my buttons and my Avon clothing all the time, but, um, you know, you, I wasn't, you know, do you have any recruits? Do you have any referrals? You know, join my team, buy from me to this person. I just, I, I live my life and I, I made a connection. I made a friend. I developed a relationship and I don't know, they felt comfortable enough to pass on my information, which is great. Also, again, bonus tip, make sure that people know that you are looking for other customers and that you're open to servicing new people because that is another thing. I've met a lot of people and I've worked with a lot of new representatives who, you know, way down the line, they'll say to me, yeah, my neighbor has sold Avon, but she never shares a book. Or I found out, you know, I met my neighbor or my friend at a meeting and, you know, they sell Avon too. And I, I didn't know, but if they didn't know, they probably would have partnered up with that person to, to, for them to work together. But they didn't know the person was open to finding new customers. They didn't know the person was open to um, working with and training and coaching new representatives. So you don't want your, your customers and your friends to say, oh, I, I didn't know that you could help a new rep. Talk about it in conversation. Me, my conversation usually sounds something like, um, you know, this morning I got some new representative training. I'm coaching some new men and women in Avon. I can't make it for coffee. I wasn't saying, you know, something like, um, I don't know, I train people, give me people to sign up. <laughs> I'm just sharing my, my life with my friends. Like, you know, I can't make coffee this morning. I've got a new rep training. I could have just said, I can't make it. I'm busy. And I'm not even purposely saying, you know, I've got new rep training, but you know, when you're interacting with people, you just, sorry, I got, I got to do this training. Um, I got to, go here. And, you know, when I do events, I also share my social media. This is where I am. This is what I'm doing. These are the people that I'm hanging out with. So in the same way that I do with my friend friends, I do it with my Avon friends. So my French friends, you know, non-Avon friends see me hanging out with Avon people and my Avon people see me hanging out with my architecture people or my church people or whatever else. So, you know, just be sharing what you do to everyone around you and people will come. You know the saying, if you build it, they will come. If you promote, they will come. Doesn't happen overnight, but it will happen. You just have to keep doing it. And make sure that the way you're doing it is in a positive light. Because if you're complaining about how much you hate what you're doing, or how unhappy you are, or how this and this is not working out, and how this and that person are doing what you don't like, blah, 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 then people are going to you know, not want to work with you and they're not going to refer people to work with you. I can't tell you how many times I met like complaining people and it's like, oh, nobody wants to join my team. And I'm like, well, I wonder why. Or actually, I don't really <laughs> wonder why. I wouldn't want to work with you either. And if you were my only um, introduction into this business, if you were the only rep and a lot of people, I mean, when I started, I didn't know any other representatives. So, you know, sometimes you are the represent, like the real representative of the company. You know, the people in your social circle have never met another representative or maybe they know a rep and the person didn't say what they do. But, you know, you have to represent the company well, be professional, be positive. Don't only talk about, you know, negative things that happen. Sometimes, you know, it's business. Sometimes it's rough. The same things I see in this business are the same things I see in my day job. But I, you know, you can't only focus on those things. Try to find the positive things. And with, that's actually one of the reasons that I'm so, um, so 
focused and intent on having us share our wins for the week because it's easy to get sucked up into, you know, these are my goals, but I haven't reached them yet. And, you know, that is the only thing that is, is, is driving me the frustration. But as you strive towards your goals, you're hitting landmarks and, and, um, and mile markers along the way so that, you know, if you stop and celebrate those things, it, it really helps. So those are my tips. I said I had five and I know I gave you guys more than that, which is great. Thank you again, Miss Janet, for participating and sharing your tip with us. I kind of just pulled that and incorporated that into being a tip. But um, thank you guys for watching. I will be back here again next week. But today is the first week of March. We've got a whole new month ahead of us. And even though our weather in the Northeast has taken a turn in the reverse, we've got spring ahead. So we're going to be talking about... Um, tips for events and activities in the field and outside and you all will have an opportunity to try the things that we talked about here today in you know upcoming days and weeks and you know not for nothing but snow's coming where's the first people that people first place that people go when there's a storm to the supermarket so while you're stocking your shelves in preparation for the storm you're going to be surrounded by people as well so even in the winter there are opportunities. So I hope you guys found these tips helpful. I hope these maybe got you thinking about even things that you've heard before in a different way. A lot of this is not brand new stuff. I didn't, you know, just think of all these things. These are things that I've learned from other people that I'm just passing on and sharing with you, but things that I've kind of put my own spin on um, and made it work for me and my introverted self, introverted sci sci shelf, shy introverted shy self <laughs> when I first started so I know that these things work and I know that if you guys stick with it and are consistent it can work for you as well so be sure to leave your comments below if you're trying these things and it's working or even if you're trying it and you feel like you might be doing something that's not working out and you want some tips to help refine you've got this whole entire amazing community to help you out and share ideas with you so get to typing in the chat box we are here for you and we're more than happy to answer your questions so thank you guys again for joining me that is nine o'clock it's a wrap i will talk to you guys again next week have a great day bye